It's Thursday, June 24. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has signed an agreement with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the World Health Organization, WHO. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton signed the agreement on Tuesday. He says the government of Jamaica through the Ministry of Health and Wellness has committed to providing a voluntary contribution of 800,000 U.S. dollars to PAHO as part of this technical cooperation. Dr. Tufton says the key areas of focus are significant to the advancement of efficiency in Jamaica's healthcare systems. Some of the recrafted COVID-19 measures that were announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Tuesday as he addressed Parliament will take effect today, June 24. Simone Absalom Gale tells us more. The order under the Disaster Risk Management Act has been modified to phase in new measures for places of worship and cinemas. We will modify the existing order to phase in new measures for places of worship and cinemas. We will modify the restriction on the number of persons allowed to be physically present for worship services from the current limit of 50 persons to a capacity-based limit depending on the size of the designated area for worship. And when I say designated area, every church would have their worship hall. He says the maximum number of persons present will be determined as 70% of capacity. Which is calculated based on one person for every 40 square feet of the designated worship area. So in effect, there is a 1 to 40, which allows for the, distance, the social distancing calculation. Mr. Holness also explained how the changes will impact drive-in cinemas. For drive-in cinemas, we will remove the existing capacity limitation under the number of, of the number of vehicles, but instead require that the maximum number of persons in any vehicle should not exceed the number permitted to be in the vehicle under the registration. So for vehicles that are registered to carry more than seven persons, the maximum allowed will be eight. A vehicle designed to accommodate no more, so a, a vehicle designed to accommodate no more than 15 persons shall be the largest vehicle permitted. So if your vehicle is registered for five, only five. If your vehicle is registered for seven, only seven. All the existing protocols, for example, temperature checks, sanitization, and mask wearing must continue to be observed. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Cabinet has approved the establishment of a multispectral body named the Street and Working Children Task Force. The task force will review a study of children living and working on the streets of Jamaica and finalize a street and working children framework and action plan. The findings of the study will also be published for public perusal. The multisectoral body will oversee the implementation of the framework of action in order to cauterize and significantly reduce the prevalence of children living and working on the streets in Jamaica. Children working on the streets is indicative of a lifestyle of significant risk. The last survey on this vulnerable population was undertaken at a time that predated the passage of the Child Care and Protection Act in 2004. The purpose of the study is to determine the factors that lead to children living and working on the streets. Inclusive of trafficking victims that may be invisible and to identify gaps in the provision of care and social protection services that could impede an effective response to addressing the street children. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency and the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information will use the study to inform policies and programs aimed at preventing children from living and working on the streets of Jamaica. Students will begin their CXC exams on Monday, June 28. The Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, delayed the regional exams by two weeks following calls by the Caribbean Union of Teachers and the United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, for CXC to make further adjustments to this year's examinations. Minister of Information, Youth and Education, Favel Williams, gave an update at a post-Cabinet press brief on Wednesday. Simone Absalom-Gale reports. 
The initial start time for the exams was June 16. However, the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, in a release, said the delay was to provide candidates with extra time to prepare for the examinations. The CXC stated, quote, It is important to note that further consideration will be given during the grading process to account for the likely psychosocial impact on students' performance to further ensure that they are not disenfranchised, end quote. Minister of Education, Youth and Information Favel Williams says even though students have been allowed to defer their exams due to the impact of the pandemic on their academic life, she believes some students sitting the exams this year are still not fully prepared. But I believe that the students who have made the decision to go forward with the exam, they have been preparing themselves, uh, they would have understood exactly what would be required of them and they having taken the decision to go ahead with the exam i believe that um, they will be given it their best the exams will last from june 28 2021 to july 30 2021 the results will be released within the last week of september and the first week of october Minister Williams says the results will give further insight on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on students. It's been difficult for everyone and we want to wish all our students all the best as they continue to prepare in these last days leading up to the exam. Concessions have been put in place in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, including the delay of SBA submissions. That deadline is set for June 30. Also, for the first time, CXC will accept SBAs in January 2022 for candidates deferring to sit exams for subjects offered in that period. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Just under $25 million is to be paid out to several aggrieved residents who sued the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, for their suffering resulting from fires at the Riverton Disposal Site in St. Andrew in 2012 and again in 2015. Information Minister Favel Williams gave an update at Wednesday's post-Cabinet press brief. Cabinet gave approval for the settlement and financial support of claims in the amount of $20,411,156.94 arising from a fire at Riverton Disposal Site on February 6, 2012 and March 7, 2015. On February 7, 2019, the claimants filed a claim through their attorneys alleging that on or around March 7, 2015, a fire was ignited at Riverton, consuming much of the facility and continued until on or around March 29, 2015, and produced a nuisance to several communities. The claimants sustained personal injuries, lost damage, and incurred expenses and took legal action. The curfew that was imposed in sections of Kingston Central has been extended. It will remain in effect until 7 p.m. on Friday, June 25. The required boundaries are north along East Queen Street from the intersection with Hanover Street to the intersection with South Camp Road, east along South Camp Road from the intersection with East Queen Street to the intersection with Water Lane, south along Water Lane from the intersection with South Camp Road to the intersection with Hanover Street, and west along Hanover Street from the intersection with Water Lane to the intersection with East Queen Street. The curfew was initially imposed following an increase in crime and violence in the area. The Jamaica Stock Exchange goes green. The Montego Bay Revenue Service adjusts its business hours. Plus, we get our regular daily market update in today's edition of the Business Report. The Jamaica Stock Exchange, JSE, on Wednesday launched its collaborative green bond project aimed at attracting capital through green bond listings. At the project's end in 2022, the JSE will list the Caribbean's first green bond. It says this will reinforce Jamaica as a place of choice to conduct sustainable business. A joint effort of the JSE and the Climate Change Division within the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change, the Green Bond Project is expected to explore the debt market as a source of financing for climate resilience and low-carbon development in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean region. 
The JSC says the project is expected to broaden the scope of participants in capital markets, increase investment alternatives, and increase awareness of climate change and its consequences. It adds to the JSE's 2019 launch of the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange and is expected to be executed over 24 months. The project, dubbed Facilitating an Enabling Environment for a Caribbean Green Bond Listing, covers designing policies and guidelines to facilitate the listings of green bonds in Jamaica and to guide the integration of climate financing strategies into national reports, policies, projects and programs, among other measures. This project, which is funded by the Green Climate Fund and has a duration of 24 months, is expected to be transformative for Jamaica and the Caribbean. Not only are we exploring and designing frameworks for the measurement and certification of green, but we are also ensuring that we direct capital flow into our region. That's very important for us. Green bonds are usually used by governments, banks, municipalities or corporations to fund projects that have positive environmental or climate benefits. The world global markets are now focusing on solutions for social and environmental challenges and hence the stock exchange too. Investors are also having a keen eye for companies with a social and environmental focus and do now are attuned to socially responsible investing. Principal Director of the Climate Change Division and National Designated Authority of the GCF, Uname Gordon, lauded the partnership. Partnership for us is a relationship. And this seed that is being planted by the JC within the GCF portfolio and especially within the private sector facility will open wide doors for governments in the region and the private sector in Jamaica and across the, across the Caribbean. Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Pernell Charles Jr., described the project as a seminal one. A project which is going to pave the way for the floating of green bonds, not just from Jamaica, but from the region on our Jamaica Stock Exchange. This represents a truly watershed moment for our country, for the, a small developing nation that is stepping out, boldly, leading. Project lead and group business development manager within the JSC, Andre Gooden, outlined the Green Bond Project's goals. We will conduct an assessment of the current framework for green bonds, develop green bond listing standards and guidelines, and thirdly, capacity building and knowledge sharing. By the end of this year, 2021, we would have completed the market assessment to provide a comprehensive green bond assessment report and a roadmap, as well as we would have completed the development of our listing standards and guidelines. We will then usher in 2022 with market education and training of our respective stakeholders in the entire universe of uh, investing capital markets and then close the curtains on the project this time next year in the summer of 2022 with the listing of a green bond on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. In July 2020, the government received grants totaling approximately 120.3 million Jamaican dollars. Approximately $82 million was programmed for the JSE listing. Climate Action stands at number 13 on the 17 number list of the Sustainable Development Goals SDG 2030 agenda. The Montego Bay Revenue Center is operating on adjusted business hours. In a release, the Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, says business hours will be from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. through to Friday, June 25. The interim arrangements have been made following an assessment of the work currently underway to effect repairs to the air conditioning system at the location. On Tuesday, workers at the Montego Bay Tax Office went on strike, protesting poor working conditions after complaining about the absence of a working air conditioning system. Some workers allegedly collapsed. The tax authority says although operations will continue to take place at the location, the public is advised that the number of persons allowed access into the banking hall at any one time will be restricted. 
It says extensive work is being undertaken to restore the central unit to ensure the comfort and safety of staff and the clients, particularly as the island is experiencing warmer than normal temperatures. The tax authority says it is quite aware that the disruption of service at its Montego Bay location will inconvenience members of the public and urged taxpayers to use alternative electronic options available. Motorists will pay more at the pumps for gasoline effective Thursday, June 24. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from state-owned oil refinery Petrojam, motorists can expect a decrease in the prices of diesel. 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $150.55 and $155.72 per litre, respectively up by 82 cents and 25 cents. Following a decrease of 11 cents, automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $142.52 per litre, while ultra-low sulfur diesel is down by 57 cents and will be sold for $151.02 per litre. Kerosene saw a price increase of 97 cents and will be sold for $120.09 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum saw a price increase of $1.27 and will be sold for $61.74 per litre. Butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $67.88 per litre after an increase of $0.66. Cents. Expect price changes as marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. In Wednesday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index declined by 741 points to close at over 436,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 93 stocks, of which 42 advanced, 41 declined, and 10 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 8 points to close at over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 1834 Investments Limited, Barita Investments Limited, and CAC 2009.5% preference shares. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, 138 Student Living Variable Preference, and Access Financial Services Limited. Trading firm were Consolidated Bakers Jamaica, JMMB Group 7% preference shares, and Lasco Financial Services Limited. Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with over 2.4 million units, followed by Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with over 2.2 million units, and Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares with over 1.4 million units. In foreign exchange trading for Wednesday, June 23, the US dollar sold for an average $151.19. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $127.61. The pound sterling traded for $210.25 and the euro sold for an average $181.15. These are some of the stories from across our region. In the Bahamas, the Court of Appeals ruling on a citizenship case has prompted people to turn up to the Parliamentary Registration Department demanding to be registered to vote. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. It was the second time the Attorney General addressed the issue in 24 hours. This time he informed senators that the matter has now spilled over to the Parliamentary Registration Department. I'm informed that as early as yesterday and certainly today, persons seeking to benefit from the ruling of the Supreme Court are presenting themselves at uh, certainly the Parliamentary Registration Department and possibly at other areas such as the Passport Office uh, seeking to claim the benefits of full Bahamian status. Uh, unfortunately, the matter is uh, being appealed to the Privy Council and steps are being taken. The law is not settled. On Monday, the Court of Appeal affirmed a ruling by Supreme Court Justice Ian Winder that every person born in the Bahamas shall become a citizen of the Bahamas at their date of birth if either parent, irrespective of their marital status, is a citizen of the Bahamas. However, Bethel insisted the law has not changed despite the ruling. If we were to lose at the Privy Council, at that time, it would then be we would then be required to make changes to domestic law. In other words, nothing has changed as a result of the ruling because the matter is still a matter of contest. The Attorney 
General said all government agencies must obey the laws of the land. His comments did not sit well with Progressive Liberal Party Senator Frederick Mitchell, who contended that the law has changed. He said those impacted by the ruling can go to the passport office and seek to get a passport. As soon as the court pronounces, unless there's a stay, it changes automatically. So as I who said that the Attorney down, General's he office... down to the passport office says, give me my mm-hmm. passport. Mm-hmm. Until you get a stay, he's a Bahamian citizen. We are please. applying for a stay. So I'm saying you Thank need you. to do that with alacrity because yeah, the person can that. stand on the law right now and say, Court of Appeal is ruled, I'm a citizen, yeah, it changes automatically, and, and you know, all you need is the fellow from Grand Muhammad to rush up the road and say, you're a citizen. Bethel says they're working on it. We are on the Attorney General's office side, taking steps right now to A, apply for a stay and also make our application to the uh, Privy Council. These things have to be done in a measured way and in a lawful way and we are taking steps to do them on the basis of urgency. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Authorities in St. Lucia have raised the alarm at the recent pace of election campaigning during a pandemic. Party officials and supporters have been urged to exercise patience as command center officials fine-tune new campaign protocols. Sulish Alfred of HDS News Force reports. The past few weeks have been dominated by heavy trucks blaring music, supporters banging pants, while others sing and dance, all showing their party colors. The fanfare surrounding general elections has not been dampened by COVID-19 and the public health state of emergency instituted to blend its virulent threat to the population. The atmosphere, for the most part, has been stirring and euphoric, lending some to let their guard down and skirt the COVID-19 protocols of social distancing and mask wearing. Hordes of supporters of the two main political parties have been out at large, whether on board the Flubbo train or on foot in the lively Pan Sunday walkthroughs as the campaign season gets into full swing. We're concerned about the large crowd, um, especially uh, it's simply because of the health issues that it may pose. The top cop in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Milton Daisy, views the invigorated election campaign as a cause for concern. He reveals that members of the command center are fine-tuning plans to regulate electioneering during the pandemic with a related state of emergency still in effect. The CMO, myself and other members of the national the command center, we have met and um, we have devised some protocols for, for um, campaigns and so on and also the Motor kids, what shall be what shall be permitted and so according to the police commissioner officials are finalizing the ground rules for the campaign protocols with further consultations still pending we need to meet with the various stakeholders uh, just to to have feedback from them and then for it to be approved so the, um, persons would be allowed to have their motorcade and and um, campaign in a controlled manner Daisy was asked by the press about a general overview of the proposed protocols, including permission for hosting campaign-style events. Yes, most, um, most likely um, they would need to apply because we would need to know where these activities will be held so that we could police it. But um, general, general permission will be given to host them. But it's just that each individual activity they would need to apply. In the absence of campaign protocols, supporters and officials of the main political parties have been found wanting in adherence to public health measures, staging campaign-style political rallies, motorcades and mass gatherings. Daisy is imploring the public to exercise patience as the finer details of the safety protocols are fleshed out. All those that have been gone through without commissioner's permission, it's illegal and I'm asking that we wait. Um, it would be very soon that this, um, 
protocols will be in place and persons would be free to all persons would be free to do their motorcades, their, um, their rallies and so on. The various campaigns of the political parties and the wide field of contenders show no signs of abating with canvassers and candidates on the hustings as they look to make a powerful and persuasive case to prospective voters as well as rally the base. The virtual campaign is also heating up with social media platforms awash with photo ops and the tally of shares and likes of campaign videos and songs stick up as contenders seek to captivate tech-savvy voters. With the clock running out on a 2021 campaign billed as an election for the ages, opponents warn the authorities must move with haste to ensure the ground rules are firmly in place so St. Lucians can exercise their democratic rights even in a state of emergency. Sula Jalfred, HCS News Force. And in sports, we're out of the blocks with athletics. Jamaican sprint legend Veronica Campbell-Brown has retired from the sport. The announcement came on Wednesday via a social media post. She said, quote, As I take off my spikes never to put them on again, this girl from Clarkstown walks away happy and contented with a race well run, end quote. In a career that spanned two decades, VCB, as she's affectionately called, won a total of 46 medals with 27 gold, 16 silver and 3 bronze medals. She is one of only nine athletes to win world championships at the youth, junior and senior level of an athletic event. Her personal best times in the 100 meters is 10.76 and 21.74 in the 200 meters. The athlete had returned to the sport earlier this year after a two and a half year hiatus. We now turn to cricket. West Indies Test captain Craig Brathwaite has commended the team on their improved fielding during the recently concluded Test Series against South Africa and pointed to their assistant coach Guyanese Rayon Griffith for his influence. Head coach Phil Simmons also applauded the players for a stellar effort in the field. Both spoke to Newsroom Guyana. Well, you know, um, Griff does a, a magnificent job. Um, he's a guy that's always, always willing always full of energy and he works very hard. So it's, it's very good, you know, to see that, you know, his hard work is, is showing, you know, for the for obviously the, the public to see, you know, because I think he does a magnificent job uh, along with all the coaches. But, you know, he's, he's doing a very good job. So it's really good to see he's, he's getting, you know, some rewards that you that you guys could see. I, I think the catching performance has been absolutely incredible. I think some of the catches, especially just all as one-handed catches, is something to that we can always bounce back on and, and, and keep looking at it and be amazed at it. Um, I think we've caught well, we've fielded well. Um, so it, the fielding side of it has been great. Time now for a quick weather report. Showers and isolated thunderstorms are forecast this afternoon across sections of most parishes. Tonight will be partly cloudy. On Friday, expect a partly cloudy morning with afternoon showers and isolated thunderstorms mainly across central and western parishes. And with that, we wrap up today's package. Join us tomorrow, same time and place for more news right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.